Assalamu alaikum this is Dr Hasna and now I'll continue from where we last left off in the knee joint we've discussed the various ligaments of the knee joint the type of joint knee joint is today we're going to discuss the movements of the knee joint which are slightly complex hence I had to dedicate a whole video to it the knee joint is basically what type of joint a condylar joint between the femoral articulation and a saddle joint between the femoropatellar articulation all right the knee joint has four important movements flexion extension medial rotation and lateral rotation now flexion and extension are quite simple and we have already discussed them before flexion is done by the flexor compartment of your thigh the muscles of the posterior part of your thigh these are the hamstring muscles and the hamstring muscles include which ones basically the semi tendinosus semi membranosus and the biceps femoris then we have extensors of the knee joint these are the muscles of the anterior compartment of the thigh the extensor compartment the quadriceps femoris and what are the quadriceps femoris composed of the vastus medialis vastus lateralis vastus intermedius and the rectus femoris now let's talk about the medial and lateral rotation all right so the medial and lateral rotation occur in two ways when you're sitting or when you're standing so when you're sitting the medial and lateral rotation are basically going to be occurring with the help of tibia so you can say when you're sitting your tibia is moving to cause the medial and lateral rotation but when you're standing the tibia is fixed the femur does the medial and lateral rotation so this is point number 1 all right so when you're sitting down tibia is going to be mobile but when you're standing up the femur is going to be mobile the second point is that basically the meniscus the two menisci that we've already discussed in the previous video the two meniscus have divided the joint cavity into an upper compartment and a lower compartment and i've already told you that the upper compartment is where the flexion and extension takes place in the lower compartment the medial and lateral rotation take place let's talk about what happens in the medial and lateral rotation of your knee joint let's talk about when you are standing the concept of medial and lateral rotation when you are standing is going to introduce you to the terminology of locking and unlocking of the knee joint and when you're sitting it is basic medial and lateral rotation so let's talk about sitting first when you are sitting or your knee is flexed the medial rotation is carried out by the pss muscles the popliteus the semi tendinosus and the semi membranosus the lateral rotation on the other hand when your knee is flexed or when you are sitting is carried out by biceps femoris why because the biceps femoris goes and gets attached to the lateral side of your leg now let's talk about the concept of locking and unlocking of the knee joint locking and unlocking is basically in other words or simpler terminology is the medial and lateral rotation of the knee joint when you are standing so there are two ways you can stand either you are standing in an attention posture like the army or when you are standing in an assembly where you fixed your knee joint or you've locked it other type of way you can stand is when you are casually standing the major purpose of locking and unlocking of the knee joint is so that there can be reduced muscular effort when you've locked the knee joint so what does that mean basically what it means is when you stand all right when you stand that means you're going to extend your knee joint right so suppose this is a flexed knee joint and now i will stand when you are extending your knee in the last 30 degrees of your extension your femur will undergo medial rotation this is called locking of the knee joint and when you finally have to either stand in a relaxed position or if you have to flex your knee then your femur will undergo lateral rotation and then the flexion will occur all right so this occurs because the condyles of the femur have a different anteroposterior diameter the anteroposterior diameter of the lateral condyle of the femur is lesser than the medial condyle of the femur so if the medial condyle of the femur is greater so the articular surface of the lateral condyle is entirely consumed when you extend your knee however the medial condyle still has some articular surface left hence the lateral condyle acts as a pivot and causes medial rotation of the medial condyle so the medial condyle of the femur can also completely articulate with the 
condyles of the tibia. What is locking and unlocking is basically a medial and lateral rotation of your knee joint when you are standing. The first point in locking and unlocking is that they occur due to the lesser AP diameter of the femur's lateral condyle as compared to the medial condyle. Hence, the lateral condyle is completely used up in articulation. Hence, now the lateral condyle will act as a pivot and allow for rotation of your medial condyle in the last 30 degrees of extension and lock the knee joint. And when you have locked the knee joint, what happens is now your muscles that were extending the knee joint, they can relax because your knee joint is locked. All right. So to reduce the muscular activity, your locking is done so that you can stand for long periods of time. And now when you're asked to flex your knee, initial 30 degrees of flexion, you will do unlocking. And that is done by lateral rotation of the femur first and finally the rest of the flexion. All right. And that's when muscles come back into action. All right. And the second point is that the last 30 degrees of extension, there is medial rotation of the femurs, medial condyle using lateral condyle as a pivot causing locking of the knee joint. So that reduced muscular effort is involved. And the, in the initial 30 degrees of flexion, you have to break away from the lock. Hence, in the initial 30 degrees of flexion, the lateral rotation or the opposite movement has to occur to unlock the knee joint. So it makes sense. This is the concept of locking and unlocking. Overall, it is important to remember that the rotations occur around a vertical axis, while the flexion and extension occur around a transverse axis. Now, what we need to know is who are the lockers of the knee joint and who are the unlockers of the knee joint. So we all know that locking means medial rotation. So there should be a muscle that is coming medially. Okay. So which muscle is coming medially is the vastus medialis of your quadriceps femoris. Hence vastus medialis is the important muscle that causes locking of the knee joint. All right. And the unlockers, unlocking means lateral rotation in a standing posture. So the lateral rotation will be done by a lateral muscle. And what is the lateral muscle? It is the popliteus muscle. So overall, what is the concept of locking and unlocking? I will repeat once again. When you are standing, the last 30 degrees of extension, when you are standing, since the lateral condyle's AP diameter is less than the medial condyle's AP diameter, and now the medial condyle needs to completely articulate with the tibial condyle, your lateral condyle becomes a pivot, and in the last 30 degrees of extension, it causes the femur to undergo medial rotation and completely fit into the medial condyle of the tibia. All right, this is known as locking. This reduces the muscular effort required for the extension of your knee or standing. Unlocking occurs in the initial 30 degrees of flexion, where your femur undergoes a lateral rotation due to the pivotal action of the lateral condyle so that it can break off from the lock and then it undergoes flexion. This is known as unlocking. So these are the movements and locking and unlocking of the knee joint, a very important concept. I really hope you understood the video. In the next video, we'll talk about the various clinicals of the knee joint. Thank you so much for watching.